FBI agents who refused to break the law, who refused to carry out what they view as unlawful orders, or who came out to expose alleged crimes being committed by the agency itself, they have now been punished by the FBI. Some of them lost their jobs, some of them have been denied pay. Many of them were defamed and attacked by news outlets, notably after members of Congress selectively leaked false information about them. News outlets had to publish corrections on it. The agents lost their well-being, the reputations were harmed, and they knowingly faced these punishments in order to uphold the values that the FBI was expected to uphold. Now this was the gist of the hearing today, on just a bit, of what's gone wrong with the FBI. It was part of the investigation to the weaponization of the federal government. It's being conducted right now under the House Judiciary Committee. Representative Jim Jordan, chair of that committee, laid out the premise in his opening remarks, and he also made a shocking statement. Watch this. Politics is driving the agenda in federal agencies. If you don't believe me, just read the Durham report from three days ago. No probable cause, no predicate, no evidence whatsoever, but the FBI opened a case took a dossier, a dossier they knew was false, from a political campaign, from the Clinton campaign, to spy on a presidential candidate and American citizens. Here was the key line from the Durham report. Quote, the FBI failed to uphold their mission of fidelity to the law. Did you hear that? The FBI failed to uphold its mission of fidelity to the law. What does that mean? That's a fancy way of saying the FBI was breaking the law. They were using the powers of investigation and of prosecution, powers we've given to them, in a way that violated the law. What do we call it when a law enforcement branch can use its powers to violate the law and to target people politically? Well, you know what? That's called extrajudicial police force. It's what you see in communist countries. It's what you see under fascist regimes. Now, is this really true then? That the FBI has become politicized and is now acting notably in the interests of the Democrat Party and its affiliates. Then what we have, instead of just a normal law enforcement branch, is something closer to a Praetorian Guard. In ancient Rome, the Praetorian Guard was the elite unit of the army. They were the personal protectors of the Roman emperor and the bodyguards of the politicians. They were the intelligence agents. They worked as the eyes and the ears of the regime. And as it's often been the case in history, they became the elite guard as a, of a tool, really, of political intrigue. They conspired with the Senate to overthrow emperors. They terrorized and they subdued the average citizens. Their fidelity, their, their loyalty was not to the law. They were weapons wielded by the hands of power. Now the concern we have in the United States with the FBI is that they're now playing a similar role. And the recent release of this report from Special Counsel John Durham is serving as a public spectacle of what the agency has become. In particular it details how the Clinton campaign and the Democrat Party created false information, fake, opposition research in the form of the Steele dossier to claim falsely that then-candidate Donald Trump had colluded with Russia to rig the elections. Talk about election interference, right? And despite the information being false, despite the FBI not having the legal means to do so, the FBI began an extra-legal investigation into Trump. It undermined his presidency and it even culminated with attempts to remove him from office. Look, put nicely, the FBI was involved in an attempted palace coup, a conspiracy of a political faction and of a corrupt agency to take him out. It was very much like the Roman plot of the Senate, using its personal guard to overthrow the emperor. And the public is now becoming aware. We now know the FBI had no actual evidence. That's the actual quote, actual evidence, none of it, in its investigation of Trump. The only basis for that were false claims from Trump's opponents. Headlines on this have blanketed news outlets all throughout the week. The public is now aware. Now the scary thing is that nearly all tyrannical regimes around the world employ security forces like this. We don't want the FBI becoming this. Around the world, agencies like this work as a secret police. 
They are the extra judicial police forces able to carry out surveillance on, on citizens who are suspected of opposing the ruling regime. They're able to target the political enemies of the ruling faction. You know, East Germany, they had the Stasi for this. The Nazis, they had the Gestapo for this. Under the Soviet Union, it was the KGB. Its emblem was the sword and the shield, and that meant something. That emblem represented its role of shielding the regime while putting its enemies to the sword. And this is unfortunately what the FBI looks like it did with Crossfire Hurricane. The Daily Mail said this, for example. It reported that former President Barack Obama and then Vice President Joe Biden, who's now president, were even briefed on that scheme ahead of the 2016 elections. And while that scheme against their political enemy was allowed to unfold, the FBI and the Justice Department acted to restrict investigations into the opposite side of the political aisle into the campaign of Hillary Clinton. We now see how that sword and shield of the FBI were used. And according to Representative Jordan, the politicized nature of the FBI has gone beyond just battles between Democrats and Republican factions. It has now reached the point where it is carrying out abuses on the American people. It also sounds like the abuses are not holding the fidelity to the law. Watch this. Agency focused on politics. But I would argue today it's even worse. Because today it's not just presidential campaigns. Today it's the American people. They're the target. You don't, you're not politically correct. You're not in line with what they think should be the political position, the proper position. You're the target. Parents attending a school board meeting, pro-lifers praying at a clinic, or Catholics simply attending mass, you could be a target. Now look, if this is true, this should concern all of us. The FBI functions already like a, like a federal level police force. It's now armed with the powers of intelligence agency on top of that. To an extent, it's able to carry out already extrajudicial operations. It can bypass, to an extent, constitutional protections for average Americans. It can also do this with very little public oversight, and that's because of the fact that its actions have, at least in the past, been protected by the veil of ongoing investigations or the label of classified material. It makes it very hard for folks to know what they're doing. And this is not just some exaggeration. Representative Matt Gates raised this point during a recent hearing. He questioned DOJ Inspector General Michael Horowitz. Watch. I want to get into the 3.4 million backdoor sources that the ranking member pointed out in his opening statement. Uh, Mr. Inspector General, how should the public think about this? Well, I think what we've seen in the various public reports, um, and I'm limited in what I can say about what's public, which I think is one of the issues, by the way, that's worth talking about is transparency here. Um, it's, it's obviously very concerning that there's no volume of searches, um, and particularly concerning the error rate that was reported on in the last two years um, in the public report. Now, the error rate is what? Um, I believe it was around 30%. Um, I, I think total numbers. I think it's around 30%. Uh, 30%. I, I'm a lawyer, not a mathematician, but 3.4 million, about 30%. You're talking about seven figures of error. This is not how law enforcement agencies are supposed to operate. The FBI is a relatively new organization. It wasn't established through Congress. It was established through an executive order. And it was established without the level of thought that went into the original systems of law enforcement, the sheriffs, for example. In the United States, the sheriffs are elected officials. They are, and they're deputies, right? They're sworn to uphold and protect the U.S. Constitution. There are safeguards in place to make sure they do not get used as political tools. That is how law enforcement in the United States is supposed to function. Checks and balances. There are, of course, many good people in the FBI, and the FBI still carries out many important investigations. You know, they've been targeting, for example, Chinese spies and organized crime organizations. Many in the rank and file tend to deeply believe in the work they're doing and the impact of that work. And they do hold themselves to the FBI's creed of legal fidelity. But the concern now is that the men and women who speak out against wrongdoing, who refuse to carry out what they see as abuses of justice or even illegal acts, they are now being punished for doing so. 
Stay tuned after the break. I'll be going deeper into that, folks, into what we've learned about the IRS, the weaponization of government, and to especially into how the whistleblowers on corruption are now being attacked. Welcome back. Witnesses during Thursday's hearing on the weaponization of government, they detailed their experiences with being punished by the FBI and by the government for speaking out on corruption. One of them was a whistleblower, FBI Special Agent Garrett O'Boyle. He had this to say while he was, while he was questioned by Representative Kelly Armstrong. Watch this. So you would legitimately try to protect one of your colleagues from doing what you have done? Absolutely. And how do you think that solves being able to shine light on corruption, weaponization, any kind of misconduct that exists with the American people? It doesn't solve it. But the FBI will crush you. This government will crush you and your family if you try to expose the truth about things that they are doing that are wrong. And we are all examples of that. Look, problems like this appear to go a step above the FBI as well. They go right into the Department of Justice, which the agency, of course, is under. The investigations into President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, showed that even whistleblowers with the IRS are being targeted in ways that also appear to be politically motivated. The IRS was carrying out criminal investigations into Hunter Biden, which was involving, of course, looking into his taxes and his business dealings. Again, Joe Biden's suspect in some of those as well. A whistleblower on that case and his entire team were allegedly removed from the criminal investigation at the request of the Department of Justice. The whistleblower's lawyer detailed this in a May 15th letter obtained by Just the News and addressed to several lawmakers. It stated this, Today, the IRS criminal supervisory special agent we represent was informed that he and his entire investigative team are being removed from the ongoing and sensitive investigation of the high-profile, controversial subject about which our client sought to make whistleblower disclosures to Congress. He was informed the change was at the request of the Department of Justice. Now, Representative Jordan also commented on what whistleblowers are facing, but the FBI as well, if they dare to step forward. Watch this. And maybe what's just as frightening is if you're one of the, the good employees in our government who come forward to talk about the targeting, you then become a target. You face retaliation. If you're one of those, and I think there are thousands and thousands of good employees working across our country in the FBI and other agencies, but if you're one of those good employees driven by your commitment to the Constitution and your conscience and you come forward, they're going to come after you. Uh, look, we're watching a strange phenomenon right now. As things currently stand, it's the Democrats who generally love the FBI now, that is, unless the agents become whistleblowers against wrongdoing, and the Republicans generally don't like the FBI unless the agents become whistleblowers against wrongdoing. And this is also a major, tra major change from how the FBI used to be viewed. It used to be the Republicans who generally loved the FBI, mainly because the FBI was targeting communists. And it was the Democrats who generally hated the FBI, mainly because the FBI was targeting communists. But the agency may finally be at a point where it will be forced to change. The findings of the FBI are just now beginning to see the light of day. The House Committee now investigating its operations and the broader picture of whether the government is being weaponized has only recently begun. It's the tip of the iceberg right now, folks. And public scrutiny of the FBI and the way it's been operating is now reaching a level where there are calls, although mainly from Republicans, to reform or even abolish the agency. The Durham report noted all the problems that took place in the FBI's crossfire hurricane investigation into Trump, at least the ones we know about. It notes how the agency essentially tossed out all standards and carried out a politicized investigation. It recommends no criminal charges. It claims that the necessary changes to the FBI to make sure politicized investigations like that never happen again, it claims they've already been put in place. But guess what? Thursday's hearing showed otherwise. A corruption has seeped into the lifeblood of the agency. And unless this corruption is removed, it risks becoming a tool 
weaponized by one faction of our system against its political enemies.